Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you God's Emperor versus Herr Robert in round one of the fifth Asia Pacific tournament. Today we're going to be seeing Mont Hormel and on the Allied side the second armoured French and on the Axis side under Herr Robert the first SS Panzer. So second game into the tournament and we are going to be seeing the second new division that was given to us in the latest update and that's going to be really really cool it's going to give us a lot to talk about a lot to analyze and we will get to understand how the new units will play into this tournament so that's going to be really really cool but let's have a talk about this matchup specifically so we have the second armored french which can utilize their m10s at long range with the 1200 meter range early on um, they can utilize Stuarts at closer range, uh, which could potentially do quite a lot of damage to the limited AT out of the first SS Panzer. Um, those Stuarts, if they aren't faced by AT early on, will roll through the infantry that Herr Robert will present, especially things like the Volksdeutsche that will be pinned down very quickly by the triple 30 cows that the Stuarts have. So that's something that God's Emperor could take advantage of. However, one thing that God's Emperor is going to have to do is invest in pioneers early on to contest the close range forest areas. Um, on the side of the first SS Panzer, I think you can get Volksdeutsche in phase A and then you can get I think some two star Sturm pioneers but whether or not Herr Robert has those remains to be seen um, as I don't take them personally due to their super low availability in comparison to the Volksdeutsche. So let's have a quick look at what's going down it'll give us a good idea of what to expect. For the top side it's going to be Volksdeutsche pushing into the, these compounds we've got one for the mid top side then on the bottom here, a lot of units. Let's have a look at these. Two Panzerjäger Stug 3s. So a double Stug start with a Puma, with a command infantry. And there is going to be the Stern Pioneers. He's actually brought them in. Um, two star veterans each. Probably going to have the command infantry accompany those. So they are three star infantry. And those should cut through God's Emperor's infantry quite significantly. However, Pioneers will match up well to those and it looks like that God's Emperor is going to be investing in his Pioneers and regardless of veterancy, the Flamethrower does a lot of damage and suppression. So that's not really going to matter that he's not got the Vet. What is going to matter, however, is that he has invested more into this. So he's going to have three units of Pioneers as opposed to the two units of Stern Pioneers on the other side. Um, but this is going to cost him a lot, especially with the investment into these WC-52s that come with them with the 50 cal. And that 50 cal can be useful, but due to them being unarmored vehicles, generally they can get mowed down pretty easily by things like Volksdeutsche, which, which have the two MG42s, for example. They could easily wipe them out. So it's going to have to micromanage these WC-52s quite well in order to utilize them properly and um, they are being led by recon here there's also the wc52 or 25 sorry um, with the command infantry on the bottom side it's going to be bazooka and command um, for the top mid it's going to be three units of voltages with a command on the top side two more units of voltages bazooka and recon so no at and no tanks out of the side of the second armored French early on, which I think is okay, but he's definitely gonna wanna make sure he gets all of this stuff into position and that might be quite hard to do if he doesn't have any tanks to support him. Especially in this mid area where there's gonna be like three pioneers without any AT help. Yes, the command does have a bazooka but that is not really something you want to be relying on. And pushing these WC-52s right into the face of these units is, in my opinion, a massively bad idea. These Stern Pioneers are going to be opening up with the flamethrowers onto the Pioneers. The Pioneer Fuhrer actually threw its grenade as well. 
That blows up one Pioneer squad. Stern Pioneers at range aren't going to have the advantage due to their veterancy. Also, with all of these units coming down the road, this is going to be an absolutely insane engagement. Two Panzer Jägerstugs just ripping these guys to shreds. A kill onto the voltages there. The command voltages would be a really nice kill. Killing the recon is also fantastic. Wow, this is a potential for an absolute rout from God's Emperor. This 222 is going to go crazy down this road. Find all of these units, possibly surrender them all. And that is going to be devastating for God's Emperor early on. He loses one Pioneer, he loses two Pioneer, he loses the Voltager Command Squad. And that is a huge blow to God's Emperor at the start of the game here. He's rushing in a six-pounder. Will that be able to do the job? He's got to hold back two Panzerjägerstugs, a 222. He's got two three star pioneers to deal with that really aren't going to be contested by anything he has. It's, I think it's unlikely he has any more um, napalm at his disposal. So, contesting the forest now is going to be exceptionally hard. Now, the AT gun has unloaded, but the 222 is already on target. And at that range, there's a good potential that's pinned or even dead before it even fires. It d did manage to get off one shot, um, but that's not going to stop these guys from continuing here. The Volksdeutsche on this top side, um, they do engage the M5 half track with a, with a Panzerfaust, but didn't quite hit the mark. Wow, even more Stern Pioneers. So I think Herr Robert must have two cards of Stern Pioneers on his division. But that's going to melt those voltages, take those out, saves the Pioneer Führer. Puma's going to take out the Bazooka, gets rid of that threat. And Herr Robert, well, although he's looking like he's in a good position in the mid here, which he definitely is after that huge rout, the 50-50 is still a thing. <laughs> it's just a very odd looking 50-50 mainly due to this M5 half-track causing a salient on the top side. The Stern Pioneers here, they're going to try and flamethrower the M5 half-track. The 232 is going to need to be used to clean up some of these half-tracks, that's for sure. The Puma needs to kind of get a move on and assist these Panzerjäger Stugs because that was a beautiful kill there by God's Emperor. Getting a Bazooka Squad to kill the Panzerjäger Stug is just really, really nice. So, fantastic job. The SS Volksdeutsche have actually found themselves behind enemy lines because they just drove up right next to the voltages before they unloaded. I think the Volksdeutsche should be able to do the job especially assisted by the puma but maybe lost more men than they needed to in that engagement um over here we can see that the fox switcher are going to be attacking the m5 half track on the top side things are holding relatively well for her robert wow but a nice kill there for the m8 spy he's got the engine destroy no no doubt the second shot will get the kill yeah that finds it side shot easy peasy well played by God's Emperor to clean this up, but uh, <laughs> just as I say that, the Puma fighting back, takes out the M8, puts things back well in favor now of here, Robert. With the command infantry being taken out on this bottom side, actually, that relinquishes a lot of ground to here, Robert, and pushes him straight to a plus two. So this needs to be fixed as soon as possible and with the introduction of an m303 he might be able to make it work but this boom is going to be a big problem for him unless maybe an m10 comes in to cover the open whilst the stewart kind of moves forwards and closer to provide direct fire support onto the enemy infantry so we do see that more infantry is on the way from here robert and by the looks of things, he has two cards of Stern Pioneers and two cards of Volksdeutsche at the beginning of the game. And that is a significant amount of investment into Phase A infantry in this division. Because that takes up a five activation slots. So this it kind of makes me worried for Herr Robert's late game with the first SS Panzer. But I don't think it's going to necessarily be an issue. Uh, due to the fact that the French fall off as well. Now these Volksdeutsche definitely have a chance of 
killing this Stuart, but that's up to Herobert to let that happen. And, oh, he missed the opportunity. Oh, maybe not. Okay, he did it. I thought he wasn't going to spot that happening. But does, finds the Panzerfaust kill, and job done. So, going to maintain the ground on the bottom side with three men. Nicely done. Stuart Pioneer is going to be trying to put the pressure onto the voltages here. Using their smoke grenades to sort of cover off against the M10 whilst they push forwards. So there is one M10 on the field. I'm not convinced about its placement, honestly. It's a bit of an odd location for an M10. Can't really utilize its range very well. Yes, it can put down a reasonable amount of HE with its 50 cal and its main gun. But there are better ways to utilize that M10 for sure. And the Volksdeutsche here, they're going to be taking out the M5 half track. The Stern Pioneers instantly surrender the voltages. There's no command here, so that's going to keep happening until the Stern Pioneers run out of napalm. The Volksdeutsche there finds some bazookas, so God's Emperor not going to get away with ambushing with that. And here we can see again the infantry engagement falling in favour of Herabert due to this mortar and of course the 232. So 56% territory lead with the plus one looking well in favour of Herabert. He's had some really significant engagements early on that have left him in this position. Now the 257 is going to be trying to help deal with the voltages here. The 232 is trying to clean up some of these half tracks. But the M10 is coming across. And Herobert is going to have to be a little bit worried about that. The French infantry at close range are going to be cleaning up Herobert's infantry. And taking back some ground on the bottom side. That does mean that it is going to stay at a plus one for the, for the time being. But we can see that these... Voltages have been found on the top side. They've been surrendered as well. So constant losses for God's Emperor. And I think the only reason that he's able to hold on so well at the moment is due to the 100 points per minute income, which is allowing him to reinforce and sort of stop these pushes that are coming through from here, Robert. But in comes the JU-87G. That's going to take out the M8. Very nice kill there. Stern Pioneers also doing a lot of damage to the voltages. 81mm mortar going to be required to prevent the infantry from doing any more damage. So I'm surprised the JUA7 is still hanging about. I'm guessing he wants to find the kill onto the M10. Don't think he has line of sight though. He might do that now that he's moved it. But without recon, I feel like this is going to be pretty hard to spot. Bazooka does go down here, runs into some Volksdeutsche. Yeah, this JU-87 is just waiting for a kill onto that M10. Now the issue with keeping the JU-87G in the air is that it will encourage God's Emperor to invest in a Spitfire. And by doing so, there's a possibility he might not only lose the JU-87, but also end up against a unit that can strafe his ground forces. And especially when your infantry is disheartened, that's not something you're going to want to happen. Like, I feel the, the first Panserna will be able to deal with this aggression very early on um, due to set things like hurricanes. But in this case, the Spitfires could just as easily do the job. So Volkswagen are going to be killing off that AT gun very quickly. Yes, they are under fire from the mortar, but there is the Pioneer Fjord here to stop things from surrendering. But uh, this Puma, I'm not sure entirely why that has just sort of stayed where it is now. Um, bringing that further down to the bottom side to support that Volkswagen that made some ground would have been really nice, but another unit they're going to get surrendered. On the top, 257, just smoking off the Stuart. And, well, there isn't really any infantry left on the map right now. We've got one voltages on the bottom side, one on the top side for the French. That is not really very good at all. But in terms of armor presence, it's not too bad, but it needs to be concentrated. 
And I think that's something that the French really falls down with is that if they want to make ground, they've got to make a very concentrated push with the forces that they, they invest in early on. And if it doesn't work out, you almost feel like you're at a constant disadvantage for the rest of the game. So in the mid, Herr Robert just taking it easy, doesn't want his Stern Pioneers to be revealed to these vehicles. Although the Volksdeutscher could move up to the top side of the tree line here and maybe try and get their Panzerfaust into one of these vehicles. 222 is controlling the main road on the top side. MG is coming down onto the voltages. The Stuart is going to get involved. And you can see it does sort of pin down these disheartened units a little bit faster, 50% faster to be exact, um, than say normal Panzergrenz. But not going to matter in this case, the 257 going to be trying to pin down that Stuart. At close range, 222, absolutely annihilating that half track. And the Sapper is there also dying very quickly indeed. Three star 222s are so lethal. They really are. Right, P38 Lightning has been invested upon. A very odd choice actually. French Lightning. I'm not sure I have ever seen someone take a French Lightning before. That's a new one for me. A close range here, the 232 taking on the M5A1. The M5A1 actually misses. Uh, the Volksdeutsche are trying to run up and get in range. The 232 is being panicked here. Second shot does not get the kill. Volksdeutsche getting into position. They are going to get a Panzerfaust on target and the M5 does go down. That is not good for God's Emperor. Now there is the Stug here coming down the road. That's going to be trying to take on the MH Spy, but the MH Spy should out aim the Stug, unless it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't an attack move, so it's not going to in this case. The 232 does go down further up to the M10, but the driver knockout is not going to be enough to stop the Stug from finding the kill there, and Herobert cleans up that aggression. So great job. Stern Pioneers still alive in the mid, although doesn't really have the close range infantry to make ground right now. However, as we can see, there is no infantry he's up against. So maybe the fact that he's not probing could be a mistake, but at the same time, I'm sure that he expects there to be more infantry in the mid right now. Nice kill there by the uh, the JU-87G, does kill off the Stuart. Also going to be going for the shot onto the half track there with the help of the Stug 3. Uh, another half track on the bottom side, that's going to get hit as well. Does get killed pretty much immediately. Sappers are going to be able to get into the building though, and they will absolutely annihilate the Panzer Grenadiers at close range. So off goes the Satchel. And those Panzer Grenadiers are very dead right now. Ooh, that was lucky. God's Emperor, very lucky with that play. He had no need really to go aggressive there, especially since the Puma was involved. But uh, with the rest of the stuff on the top side here being cleaned up, and the M10 going down to the Panzer 4J, well, we can see it's now gone to a 65% territory lead for Herr Robert. He's jumping between a plus 2 and a plus 3. P38 Lightning is going to come in for the rocket strike onto the Panzer 4J. But as you can see, this is why you don't have Lightnings. They don't pin down tanks in one run. They're not that good. Anyway, it's up to Herr Robert right now to really take advantage of this swing on the top side. He needs to get this infantry up. It should be running across the open, in my opinion, supported by the Panzer 4J, and that's how you win or secure your win in this matchup. In the mid, he does lose an infantry to this M5A1 Stuart. Yeah, the lack of aggression is concerning, especially considering how many kills he has got and has sort of been aware of getting. Like, I can understand sometimes when 
kills are happening all across the map and you don't really get a good perception of how many kills there have actually been. But in this case, it seems like all of the kills were sort of premeditated and that makes it a lot easier to keep track of. So the fact that this infantry is not advancing so aggressively, in my opinion, is a, is a big mistake out of here, Robert. Anyway, M5A1 does go down. Another tank killed out of God's Emperor. God's Emperor has moved into phase B, so he does gain access to the M4A2s. But with Herr Robert, now with 130 points per minute, and the ability to spam out multiple Panzer IVs, I feel like God's Emperor is just waiting to lose at this point. Now he is getting some aggression in there with the Stuart here. The 222 has been forced back. But any infantry he's using to push at the moment is getting hit very hard by these Stian Pioneers. On the top, M4A2 does clean up the Panzer IV J. Close range, those M4A2s can do a lot of damage. M5A1 will probably clean up the 222 there, but does have to be careful in the face of the Stug 3s and the Puma. So 11 minutes and 55 seconds at the moment until Herobert has a total victory. It's not completely over for God's Emperor yet. And he needs to get together a significant push. Otherwise, he's just going to remain in a really bad position for the rest of the map. So M5A1 does get the track wheel damage onto the Stoke 3, but that's not going to be enough. And a shooter wounded is 100 times better for Herr Robert. Oh, nice strike there from the P38 Lightning. However, with the Focke Wolf 190 in the sky... That is going to be able to get onto the back of the P-38. And the P-38 has no resilience, really. And that's going to go down. And, well, I'm pretty sure that this M5A1 has got to go a long way to get back to friendly territory. Now it's behind enemy lines. Even if it recovers slightly with its morale, it will still continue to fall back until it finds friendly territory. In this case, it doesn't matter. Stuart gets killed. Panzerjäger Stug, just going to be able to cover this infantry advance from God's Emperor. More M5A1s charging forwards on this top side as well. Volkswagen are getting involved with their Panzerfausts. However, the top one not firing does get surrendered. Second one does fire, pins down the voltages in the process. Now it's up to this uh, Panzerjäger Stug really to clean things up. So it seems like God's Emperor is just throwing fuel on the fire by not really consolidating his units and going for a concentrated push. Like pushing two units of infantry with two half tracks on the top and in the mid separately without any other support is extremely careless and basically just continues to put him at a disadvantage. The Volksdeutsche here showing how good they are. The MG42 absolutely annihilating the Volsages at close range. Focke Wolf 190 has come in with this M4A2 coming around the corner though. That's going to do a lot of damage. Main gun 5 HE, 50 cal, 6 HE and 2 30 cals rips those infantry to shreds. Nice job by that Sherman. On this bottom side now have Panzergren supported by the half tracks pushing into voltages and sappers. If that voltage squad gets taken out and these half tracks continue to push forwards, we're probably going to look at a plus three again. But this M4A2, these can be absolutely amazing. And in this case, it's done a fantastic job. However, Stug 3G has come in, going to be engaging at the 1000 meter range, does not find the second shot just yet. Crazy stuff, but the transmission damage is going to make it difficult for this M4A2 to do too much anymore. Be aggressive as it needs to be. M4A2 has arrived in the mid as well. These Stugs have really held their ground. And that is a kill there onto one of God, em God Emperor's 
um, M4s. But honestly, at this point, I was going to say it's kind of a lost cause. And God's Emperor realizes it. And after 21 minutes and 10 seconds, Herr Robert is going to be victorious. 2,145 kills to 790 losses. Really, really well played by Herr Robert. Used the first SS Panzer quite nicely. I find it interesting the sort of units that he uses, the Stug 3Gs and uh, accompanying those with Panzer 4Js. Like in my own division, for example, I rely mostly on Volksdeutsche and Panzer 4Hs, not Panzer 4Js, but each to their own. And in this case, it worked out for Herr Robert, God's Emperor. Unfortunately, not finding the infantry engagements he really wanted and then just losing ground elsewhere um, to, again, just more poor engagements and I guess a lack of concentration of forces. And that's pretty much the tale of the game. So in terms of kills, the M10 really didn't pay itself off. This M8 Spy, though, saved the day in the mid with the Stug 3 Fs. Bazooka also as well, <laughs> getting in there and, and killing one of the Stugs. M4A2 got a nice bunch of kills on the top side. Trading an M4A2 for a Panzer 4J and on all of this infantry is actually really nice. But then if we go over to losses, the 222 cleaned up all of the WC-52s that God's Emperor paid for. The Puma cleaned up the Spai. The Stug 3s were great for sort of fire support. Didn't actually get too many kills though. 232s were a really good choice for cleaning up the half tracks. Uh, Volksdeutsche trading really, really well actually for the most part. They are, they are so cheap that they generally trade extremely well. Like that's a 25 point infantry squad killing a tank, two infantry, and a half track. JU87G, that was actually really well used. Surprised not to see a Spitfire come out on the side of God's Emperor. But at the end of the day, I think Herr Robert probably would have replied with a Focke Wolf 192 star anyway. So maybe that's what was on God's Emperor's mind. I'm not entirely sure, but allowing this JU87 to do a lot of damage wasn't ideal. And that's pretty much it. P38 Lightning 2 star, not really recommended. But that's it. That's where I'm going to leave it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.